had someone, one of our audience members say that she's excited for this conversation. So <laughs> let's take it off, Diana. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, so hi everyone. Um, my name is Diana and I am the communications director at WOW. Um, and I have been in this industry for, I think almost, uh, this is my entering my 13th year, lucky number 13. Um, and, um, I, you know, I graduated from the University of Florida. So I am a huge, huge gator, big gator. Um, anybody who knows me will tell you I love, I love my school. I love my alma mater. Um, I love and sports in general. I'm a big fan of all the Miami teams, the Marlins, the Dolphins, you name it. Um, I am also a big fan of Broadway. Um, so it's killed me that, um, you know, Broadway has been dark for so long too. So, um, you know, I let's see what else, cause I always like when I, when I talk about myself, I don't always like to talk about work. I'm like, eh, not everybody wants to hear all this stuff. Um, so, you know, those, just a little, couple tidbits about me um I love um you know I actually I'm one of those people that I actually genuinely enjoy what I do for a living um I don't think that I would be doing anything else like it's it's to me like the perfect the perfect fit um I love every every day that I come into work even on the bad days like you love I love what I um I love the work that I do um so yeah so I, I've been in this industry for 12 years I graduated um at the like in 07 going into 08 so in that like recession yeah. um when everybody was uh cutting the marketing budget and the communications budget and so jobs were very very scarce if at all so my first job was actually at an accounting firm um i was a secretary <laughs> yeah for yeah for tax season um while i looked for a job and it was um actually a connection that i had made through the alumni association they just they needed um, an extra pair of hands. And I was like, well, I need a job because, you know, I had bills to pay. Like I wasn't living at, uh, I mean, my mom was very kind, and but, and I, but I didn't want to be, you know, I wanted to contribute. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I got, it was the first job that I had. And um, I, from there, I just, I kept applying and I kept, you know, eventually the economy picked up and jobs opened up. But um, yeah, I did that for almost my first year out of college. Um, and then I I worked at a small consulting agency for almost three years. Yeah. Um, and it was uh, focused on Hispanic marketing. And um, that's kind of where I got my start in US Hispanic marketing. And then from there, um, I actually took a little bit of a hiatus from marketing and I worked in local politics. Um, and that lasted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got an opportunity to help out um, a couple people. Uh, sorry, uh, to help out a couple friends that were running for office. Um, yeah. And so that was fun, um, but it was not for me. Um, I and I'll speak freely. Like I was, I wasn't gonna sell my soul <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> um and so uh from there I actually went back into um agency life and uh U and back into US Hispanic marketing. Um and then from there, you know, just uh I worked at another just a couple other agencies and now here I am. I got this opportunity at WOW uh for almost four years ago um to come and build and start really what was the communications department and everything that was social and traditional public relations and um, it's been, you know, this department has been, it's been my baby, right? For the last four years, I've built it. I, I've, I've, um, it, and, and Peppy is awesome and everybody here at WOW is awesome. So, um, it's been, it's been quite, it's been the experience of my career actually to be working here at WOW and to be able to do this. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And Diana, how did, so when you worked for those few agencies, were you on the marketing side or were you on the communication side? So I started off, so this is what's interesting about the communications field. I started off in traditional public relations and just media. I was a media specialist and all I did all day was pitch media and pitch media and pitch media. And then as technology started to evolve um, and the industry started to evolve, I started getting into like other aspects of it. And then um, that first agency where I worked right after the whole 
politics thing um, was an integrated agency. So I was able to tap into other, I was able to learn about other aspects of um, marketing and, and, and communication. So it really made me a very well-rounded, um, I think, uh, professional. So it I was I, I learned how to write a creative brief and I was like, well, this is awesome. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And we have one of our audience members, Michelle. She's so funny. She's like, oh my God, you're my twin. Oh my God, I'm so <laughs> excited to hear all of this. She's my twin. Yeah. So I, I should probably connect you and Michelle after this. Um, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, <laughs> she's been on here before. And she's she's great. She has a boutique agency um, in Brooklyn. So I will definitely make a connection for you guys. Um, awesome. So... <laughs> Let me ask you this other question. When you think about communications and public re relations and how that really has evolved now with you have social media, you have influencers, what do you think are the like the keys to success in specifically communication in your world? So so this is some so okay so for me I think the biggest key to success and I don't think it's something that is stressed enough especially at the university level and especially because technology has kind of taken over and the uh, you know 260 character tweet is the thing um, and that's writing and knowing how to write knowing how to write well um, I've also noticed that um, people don't read as much um, and you should read everything because the, the more you read the better you write um you know reading newspapers and reading magazines it's two totally different formats reading books it's a whole other different format and i think the more you read the more you understand tone and syntax which dictates communications messaging right so um i don't think there's enough emphasis placed on writing and reading and writing these days. And it's such a basic, basic thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, I remember, and I remember once I spoke at, um, it was a, a journalism, a high school journalism convention at a universe, at a local university. And the dean of the college asked me, she's like, as somebody who hires people, like, what do you think is lacking from the students? And I said, writing. <laughs> so I'm not above like, saying that um so i think yeah so i think writing is a yeah, one. that's great and so i remember when we did the prep call for this when i asked you to be on here uh -huh. um, you shared with me how you also read international media yes. so tell us tell us <laughs> why you do that and what's your philosophy on that because i that really stuck out um with you know, that stuck out in my notes. And as I was prepping to today, it was something that I wanted to bring up. So that, um, okay, so that advice I got from um, a mentor years ago. And so every, so every day I read the local news, I read the national news, I read industry news, right? And then I read the industry of industry news for whatever client is it healthcare, automotive, you know, because all of that, what competitors are doing, what other people are doing, it all affects what your client, you know, everything. Um, and so I had a mentor that said that I should also add into that mix um, reading international media and reading like U.S. news. Like, for example, the BBC is the, the, the example. Um, read what you, the U.S. news from the BBC, because that gives you a completely different perspective um, as to what's going on in the U.S. So, I mean, we don't we don't have to get into like the news media today, but, um, you know, Re, you know, it just, it's, it's that other world perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you find that to be helpful in your everyday, <laughs> you know, in your everyday world? Um, it just, it's one of those things like the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Uh, yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> so, so it, it, um, you know, it, when you're having a conversation, when you're talking, even it, it, with family or with like your colleagues, like it just, it, it, it makes you sound smarter, like to put it in layman's terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love it. That's why I'm asking because I think it's, I think it's really important, right? I, you know, we think, I think about now how, how people are reporting the news and they're reporting the news through other people's tweets. 
and mm-hmm. they're reporting other people's news through, you know, other people's Instagram. So it's just fascinating to me that, you know, when you said that, it really stuck with me because it's something that now I'll go on and like look at international news. I don't do it every day, but right. I'm just like this is what Diana taught me. So I'm going to say it. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I love that. So out of all the clients that you work on, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, who's who's the most interesting client that you're currently working on? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, But I have to say, I think the the client that I'm working on right now that I'm, I don't want to say enjoying the most, but it's it's near and dear. It's the Dolphins Challenge Cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's there. So the Do- the DCC is the Miami Dolphins Foundation's like, annual fundraiser that um, all the funds raised go towards Sil- Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, uh, which also happens to be my <laughs> my client. So um, the but the, the DCC and Sylvester are both very near and dear to me because um, my mom was treated at Sylvester um, many years ago. So to me, anything that I can do to help promote the good work that they do is, is, um, I don't know, it's priceless. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. And Diana, how do you work across the entire agency? How is, is communications layered in, in with every single client or how, tell us what that structure is like. It depends on the client and it depends on the need. But for the most part, um, I think that I have at one point or another um, been involved in every single client. Um, It could be through translation, uh, through proofing and editing, um, through social media, through traditional PR, like whatever it whatever is needed. Every once in a while, I'll tap into to everything. Um, sometimes I like to, I like to say I'm the clo- I'm the Mariano Rivera of <laughs> of Wow. Sometimes they call me in from the bullpen just to close <laughs> something. <laughs> oh, I love that! I love that! I love that! I like those yeah. words reference. So that's great. That's great. Yeah, and I'm how- a big fan of his. So, <laughs> <laughs> and how big is your team? Um, so right now my team is two. Uh, it's me and Nicole, who I think she also logged in. Um, but you know, we're 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 growing every day as we get more more clients. So hopefully, it'll be it'll be more soon. Yeah, yeah. And one just shifting to communications crisis. Um, mm-hmm. How do you how do you prepare? Um, you know, for when something is happening that you don't expect it to happen and you want to control that message? Uh, the crisis is, a, it's something that no matter how hard you prepare for it, like there's always going to be a, like a, what's the word? Like something's always not just going to have to not, it's not going to go your way. Um, and so, uh, to, to your point about the keys to success, another key to success in this business is to be adaptable, right? Um, and know how to read a room and read, you know, a situation. So um, if we have for, cl- for certain clients, we do have, um, you know, a crisis plan. Um, and what happens if this, you know, if this happens, then you say this. If this happens, you say this. But sometimes you realize that once you're in the moment, what you had prepared for is probably not the right thing to say, can, you know, because you have to factor in then, you know, environment and, you know, what is being said in the news that day. So yeah. you have to be able to to adapt. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah that just, you know, I, I always think of... <laughs> And not to bring, you know, like a TV show into the conversation, but I always think of Olivia Pope in Scandal, right? She was always able to walk into a room and just from a crisis management perspective, you know, be able to just fix everything. And I think about people like yourself and I think about other people that are in the communication space that deal with crises. And it's just like when, you know, when you're in the middle of it, I just wanted to know, you know, how you prepare for that. But being adaptable makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I, I personally love that joke, Scandal. Um, <laughs> but it's it's not that easy. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I know. I love it. I wish it 
were that easy, and I wish I had her wardrobe. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wish I had her her purses. Those handbags yes. are uh, th- amazing, amazing, yes. amazing. <laughs> Those handbags are amazing. So, anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to to go off. You know, the deep end with <laughs> Olivia Pope. <laughs> I love her though. <laughs> um, so, Diana, you have you've been in this industry for thirteen years. You've been successful. To date, what would be the three career insights that you would offer our audience today, um, whether they're just starting out, they're middle management, or even C-level executives? Yeah, so it's always funny when I get asked this question, because even though I've been in this industry for 13 years, I still feel sometimes like when I'm in a room, I'm like, who's the adult in the room? And it's like, oh, wait, that's that's me. <laughs> um, so it's, it's funny, but um, I think, and I wrote them down so I didn't forget. So um, I think number one is networking, um, you know, making connections and not just professionally, but personally too. Um, I, I always like to give the example. So I have a group, a very close group of like five or six of us that work in PR. Right. Um, and they're kind of like my inner we're inner circle. Yeah. Um, and so we, um, it, it, communications in general can sometimes be a very cutthroat, very like catty field. Um, and some people are like, oh, I'm not going to share this contact with you because you might, you know, whatever. Um, so I think it's important to have like a core group of people that you can tap into, um, whether it's to run a pitch through by, um, hey, I need a contact. Do you have a contact here? Uh, so-and-so isn't responding to me. Do you have a cell phone? Like, you know, things like that. And so I think having that like, you know, intimate circle of like professional and, you know, friends, I guess, um, is very important, but also, um, net, you know, just in general, casting a wide net and networking with people, you know, going to networking events, they are not the funnest. They really aren't. Um, but they're, I, I call them like, a, I call them a necessary evil because not only do you use that network in the future if you need to find another job or, you know, God forbid you're laid off or whatever, um, but also for your clients, right? Um, sometimes yeah. you have to do events. Sometimes you have to connect them, you know, make connections in the community, right? If if it's a, a nonprofit, like, oh, hey, this would be a really good opportunity for my client to be able to do something good. Like, So knowing, knowing your community and knowing it well, um, I think is very important. Yeah, that's great. Um, and then uh, what else do I have here? Um, ask questions. Ask as many questions. There's no stupid questions, um, especially when you're starting out. Um, be inquisitive. Learn everything you can, um, and you never stop learning. Um, I always, I'm always doing. Um, like what is it professional development whether it's a webinar whether it's um you know an in-person training like invest you, i invest in myself um you know not your your bosses aren't always going to have like the ability to do that for you so you ha- and 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 we're lucky at wow that we do get those opportunities a lot um but i go above and beyond that like i will go and i will you know do more I don't know like I just I love to to invest in myself and and if it's a master's if it's a certificate if it's whatever like never stop investing in your professional growth I think that's key um and then the last thing is you know don't be above any task (laughs) um work hard um it doesn't if you're you know I had a, a VP uh supervisor who would clip media like the intern if it was needed you know what I mean and that stood out to me a lot. Um, he was very hands-on and he was like, okay, we have a deadline. What do we need to do? We have to turn in this recap report, send me, you know, clips and we'll all start clipping, you know? So that, that to me has stood out, um, a lot through, gosh, my entire career. Like this, you know, this person that worked, that was a senior C-level executive at an airline is like clipping media. Like, and he was like, you do, you got to roll up your sleeves and you got to do what you got to do. And I was like, okay, so you're not above or below anything. (laughs) Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. And Nicole said, Diane has sent me to plenty of (laughs) networks. 
<laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> and, and Betsy said, well said, Diana. So, yeah, I know that you guys have a, a great group that you work with. Um, and Yoli and, and Betsy are on here. So, hi, guys. Thanks to, for supporting Diana today. Um, I'm, I'm in Betsy's office right now. <laughs> oh, you are? Oh, okay. Okay. That's why you have that big window there behind yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, this is Betsy's office. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, this was great, Diana. It was so good to see you. You I'm too. So happy that we were able to have this conversation. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and we will see everyone here next week for our next next lunchtime conversation. Thanks, Diana. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.